Okay, so this is a quick talk on um, how we went around um, adopting the context package into the Nats client. Uh, so many, first, a uh, big thanks to uh, Francesc and his videos from Just for Funk, a big fan. Uh, they were very helpful into getting uh, uh, interested in really knowing how, to, how they work internally. So they were a like, uh, big help. And uh, so first, like a, a quick question is, how many of you are, are really familiar with uh, Nats as a project? OK, so I see some uh, few hands. So there's going to be a, a short intro on what is it, actually. Some. And uh, so a little bit about myself. Um, I'm uh, Valdemar Quevedo. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, uh, WallyQS. I'm a software developer at Absera. I do development of the Absera platform. And I'm so I'm a maintainer of a couple of the clients from Nats, uh, the Ruby implementation, which is the original one, and a couple of the Python ones. And I've been using Nats-based systems since uh, around 2012, uh, originally with Cloud Foundry. Also, I'm uh, giving a talk on a related how to uh, the Nats uh, client works at GopherCon this year. So I uh, see you in Denver uh, if you're attending. Um, so about this talk, it's again about um, first, like we'll cover a uh, real quick um, what is uh, the Nats project and uh, what is the context package and when is it useful to you, um, and how we went around uh, adopting the context package and adding support to the uh, to, to it on the Nats client and why. And what can, what can we do together with uh, the context and uh, the Nats uh, library? So some uh, short intro about the Nats project uh, for context. Right? Uh, it is a high-performance uh, messaging system. It is open source under the MIT license. It was first originally written in Ruby in 2010. Uh, then it was rewritten in Go in 2012. And it got like super fast from that rewrite and has been used in production for many years already at uh, platforms like uh, uh, the Observer Platform and Cloud Foundry. And it's, uh, it's gaining an increasing adoption uh, recently. Um, you can find it on GitHub under the Nats-IO organization or the website, uh, Nats.io. Uh, some of the main characteristics from Nats is that it's, a, it's a fast, and it's very simple, and it's a resilient uh, messaging <coughs> server. Uh, there was a talk about uh, this uh, the event sourcing and having like the message replay. So Nats does nothing of that. It uh, has a very minimal feature set, and it's on it's pure publish subscribe. And you could say it's uh, at most once delivery in terms of like delivery guarantees that you get. It is TCP/IP based under a basic, very basic plain uh, plain text protocol. And where the payload inside of the protocol is uh, it's, it's opaque. Uh, so you could use uh, JSON, protocol buffers, uh, message pack. Uh, you're not coupled into uh, using one of those. Uh, it could just be your row bytes as well. And but also, uh, asterisk, if you are in, uh, interested in like, having this like, messaging replay ca kind of capabilities, there's uh, another project named NAT Streaming, which gives you uh, an API for doing this at least once delivery guarantees. So what is NATS uh, useful for? Uh, it's really useful for building uh, control planes uh, for microservices. And it gives you one-to-one -one and one-to-one types of communications. Uh, the request response uh, is aimed to be like a low latency RPC. And you can also have a distribution uh, load balancing groups uh, using uh, distribution queues. And uh, has a really good uh, throughput. In, um, locally, if you uh, try to run the benchmarks, it at least will give you around 10 million messages per second. If you have a really small payload, it will decrease as you uh, bump the size. And the, by default, the, max the maximum payload size is uh, one megabyte. Um, so some examples from the API and start looking at uh, some Go code. Uh, first, uh, can everyone see this? Or should I? OK. So this is the uh, Go client API uh, from Nats. And um, here you see like you have a, you're uh, showing interest into a hello subject. And whenever you uh, receive a message, you will be print this. And you here you're publishing a message on the hello subject. Here, the payload is uh, just uh, a world. 
And notice that uh, here we don't have any timeout, for example, right? So uh, this API is uh, it's all asynchronous. Um, many uh, uh, users from NAS, when I start using it, uh, one of the first things they try is having this uh, uh, for loop where you're just publishing a lot of messages as fast as you can. And what this will uh, cause in, in, in result is uh, actually disconnecting you because you're not able to consume the messages that you're publishing, right? Uh, but OK, so if you actually want to synchronously ensure that uh, this message was published, uh, you need to flush it from the buffer. Otherwise, the, all the, the API is, is asynchronous. Uh, the request response uh, API uh, for one-to-one -one communication, it is not asynchronous. So here you have a, uh, you're subscribing to the help subject once again. And you're making a request on this uh, on the help subject. Again, payload, pi uh, payload uh, please. And you're going to give up uh, waiting for a response on this subject after two seconds. Uh, this means that uh, at, this at this point of the code path, in your, um, this is going to be blocking until it gets uh, either an error or a response. OK? So uh, this is where we start. I get into the uh, topic, which is uh, of the context package. Um, one of the shortcomings uh, of this uh, blocking call is that there is no way to cancel the request. We need to wait for the result. And can this be improved somehow? Uh, so there have been some ideas uh, already for a while in the uh, Go community. Uh, there is the original this blog post. Uh, from 2014 already, it's um, about pipelines and the doing cancellation via done channel. So and this is a very commonly adopted uh, pattern at this point. And also, the same year, we heard about the context interface and the context package. Uh, but it was until uh, last year where it is already part of the uh, of Go. So this is uh, things. I think this. Uh, Helped a lot in the, for the adoption of this um, the context uh, concurrency pattern. So we you can see now if you make a uh, quick search in Google, uh, you can see like a lot of open issues. Uh, many people are trying to implement and adopt it. Um, so this is one of the types of uh, one of the uh, simple queries I did, and it's one almost 200 issues. Um, so also internally the go. Uh, Go is also adopting uh, and requiring so, uh, adopting uh, some of its internal methods to so that they are context aware. Uh, since Go 1.8, for example, we see that that database uh, SQL also has uh, support for contexts and cancellation. So, I guess the main tip here is that if it is a blocking call in a library that you provide, it will probably benefit from adding uh, context dot context support uh, soon. So uh, how do we exactly go around uh, using uh, context? This is the um, context toolkit. We see it's an interface that has a deadline, a done channel to signal cancellations. Uh, it's you can only receive from. And uh, you can, uh, the, co the context can fail, which is going to be, uh, yield the error. And there's also uh, give you this map string, well, map interface, essentially, that where you can store uh, request scope data. And it all starts with the uh, cancellation, uh, the cancel context. And um, over uh, from that, you can start to uh, have a deadline context or a timeout context, and also the request scope data with, with value. Um, a short example of uh, using it with the HTTP uh, package. Uh, we're making a request to, the, uh, to get some of the stats from a, a NAT server that is public out there. Uh, we have start from a parent context, then specify that after 500 milliseconds, we're going to give up uh, making the request, right? And we essentially wrap the request on this uh, timeout context, then uh, use the same client API from HTTP and uh, wait for the uh, reply. And we have two types of errors that we can get. Um, one is the deadline exceeded error, which implements the net error interface. So if you do type assertion and try to check uh, whether it's it timeout, it was a temporary error, uh, that works. 
and uh, there's also the cancel error, uh, which is um, what you get when if you uh, cancel uh, arbitrarily the context. Uh -huh. So with this background, uh, we will share how we went around uh, adding uh, support for context into Nat's client. Um, so first, I want to touch on, on uh, what is essentially a Nat's uh, request. Um, Basically, what happens under the hood is that uh, you're creating this ephemeral subscription uh, with this um, this arbitrary identifier. Here is uh, number two. You're saying that uh, you want to unsubscribe for any uh, uh, incoming requests after you get a single uh, message. Uh, that's why that's how you narrow down so that you only get a single a single message. Then you will broadcast. Uh, this uh, this inbox on this help subject so that anyone that is uh, uh, showing interest into helping in the help subject uh, can reply back and write to the server that okay I can help with this uh, female subscription and here you get the uh, payload size of uh, okay I can help um, so there is um, there is writing flushing and reading from the sockets that is happening under hood then that is essentially what you're waiting for when you're making a NATS request. So, also internally in the in the Go client, uh, calling Nat's request on a on a subject uh, it is essentially also, also just syntactic sugar for doing uh, basically this protocol. You create an a female subscription, then you have a synchronous subscriber on this inbox. You say that you only only want a single response, so you withdraw the subscription after this and uh, brought me publish that uh, you want some help on this subject and wait for the next message to uh, be received and here is where is it is blocking right so this is the part that we will have to change so the first step that we did is to add uh, context aware apis um, for this uh, <coughs> next message uh, that all the subscriptions are provide and instead of having a timeout, we'll pass a uh, context. Okay, and also just in case, to avoid like uh, since I mean Nats has already been out there for a while, we don't want to uh, break compatibility with previous versions. We added uh, build tags so that they it's only enabled for uh, users of Go 1.7. So uh, this is essentially what we are uh, uh, changing. It's uh, and it's a very simplified version of how the next message uh, method works. And here we have a channel over the subscription where we will be, we will be receiving the messages. We set a, a timer af that will be will fire after it times out. And but if you get the the message before that, we'll just return uh, the message. And uh, this is what request is also using internally. So this is what we will change in this uh, select, and um, but how about one, one th and first like work in progress that uh, we try to add support. It's um, for the for context is um, how about we just uh, add it as part of the uh, subscription type uh, the struct. And we could say that uh, the subscription has a context in, in the struct. We just set the context. And instead of waiting for the timeout, uh, we wait for the uh, context to be done and get an error or the message. Okay. And uh, so, yeah, we're going to try to this. But if you, um, if you look at HTTP, for example, they uh, actually use this, um, this style for context support. And the request struct has a context type, um, has a context in its type, and you wrap the request with a, a context and send in and make the request. But if you follow the Go, Go documentation, this is style is not uh, recommended. And instead, what is suggested is to, uh, in your methods, you uh, pass the context and plumb it through that way. So that's what we did. Instead of uh, having this next message with a timeout, we expanded next message with context and uh, receiving a context. 
So now we wait for a message to be received or for the context to be done and uh, wrap up. And uh, learning from the standard library, uh, one thing that we hesitated a lot is um, um, in the standard library, when you pass an ill context, uh, it is called in panic. Uh, so for the first pass of this uh, uh, context support, uh, we don't really have any panic explicit calls inside of the of library. So uh, we went around uh, adding, returning an invalid context type of error. Um, just because we don't add any explicit panic, but um, so any feedback there is uh, welcome. But so now that we have a next message with context, and we can use it as a building block to uh, have the request with context uh, method, which is essentially um, replaces next message with context, next message with a timeout uh, by next message with a, a context. And, and that's it. Now we have a context support into the NATS library. Uh, there, were, there was not, and there was some refactoring that we had to do in order to get here, but the, in terms of the change set, it's, uh, it's not a lot. And this is how you use it now. Uh, have a request uh, with context using this um, uh, cancellation, uh, timeout based cancellation of, of, of two seconds. And uh, some of the features I really like from this, uh, the being able to use context is the uh, cancellation propagation that you start from a parent context and if you cancel uh, the parent one, it will propagate uh, throughout and um, this really helps with the read readability of the code in my opinion and so next I just want to give um, uh, some example usage of uh, using um, of uh, these APIs that are context aware an example could be is, um, you're making a probe request where uh, instead of um, making a request and just uh, giving up a certain time, uh, we can get a, a make something fancier, which is like um, gather as many messages we can within one second and scatter the message. And similarly to how similarly to how you have this uh, uh, read timeout, where after a certain point of time of not receiving data, you give up. Uh, in this case, we will uh, hard timeout after one second, but we will also time out and give up if we don't get any message within uh, 200 milliseconds uh, period. So uh, this is an example of um, how to use it then. Um, we start from the background context and we set the timeout context to give up after one second. And we wrap the cancellation function uh, done to on, the on a time uh, on a, on a time after funk that will fire at 200 milliseconds. And each time that we receive a message, we will reset the timer. So we're also not using request with context, but uh, next message with context so that we can do this uh, advanced uh, usage. So we publish the request, announce inter uh, that we want help on this subject. and each time that we receive a message, we will uh, uh, basically reset here. And um, let's say that uh, this, if the there's a subscriber that, after that it starts getting uh, uh, more latency after a couple of requests, this means that we will not wait uh, until one second for receiving everything. But after roughly 200, 300 milliseconds of uh, uh, after 300 milliseconds of receiving um, messages. So you get the uh, data that is the most alive at this point. And just imagining the amount of code we'll have to do in order to get here without using the context package. It's, uh, um, I mean, it's the review time will have been a, a, a lot more, way longer. So here we have a pretty advanced usage and we didn't add any selects, any go routines. <coughs> whatsoever. So I, I think it's a, uh, a great thing. So 
So for con uh, uh, conclusion, conclusions, um, if a call uh, blocks in your library, uh, it probably get uh, uh, use feedback from the community about uh, how soon to adopt the context package. And again, so some refactoring it might be uh, involved in order to get there, but uh, I get really helps for the ecosystem as a whole to catch them up here. And because again, uh, context-based code it uh, composes very nicely and it's a uh, uh, way it's very readable. Another thing that uh, to highlight is that it's very important to always call the uh, cancellation function because it's um, uh, basically um, otherwise you that way you prevent a leak in some of the resources um, from using the uh, context uh, and uh, that's it for my talk it's a short one uh -huh. awesome Yeah, are there any questions? Going once, going, yeah. I know, I know, I'm just like, I'll just wait until you think of one. All right. Uh, since Nats is across uh, different languages, not Go, you know, the clients are not Go, um, uh, is there, will this be implementable fairly easily with some of the other, uh, like Python or, or like say Java clients? Uh, I'm not sure. I guess it depends on the language. Uh, I'm not sure for, for Python if there's something similar. And it's, uh, I think it's mostly a Go idiom that you get because of the concurrency patterns that you are enabled by the language. Uh, I think C Sharp has something similar. That's what I heard. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, I guess it depends on the runtime. Yeah. Okay, and a question from online. Uh, what were your concerns? Uh, what what concerns did you have before adopting context? What what? What concerns did you have before adopting context? That's uh, what it says. I was uh, adding an extra dependency was a hard sell. I mean, the having to. Uh, I mean, before it, it became part of the uh, library. So, uh, I mean. It's a minor concern, but um, I guess another one is that uh, the adoption of the package, I think, uh, will help a lot here. Once we see more people in the ecosystem uh, having this context aware APIs, uh, I think we'll uh, get, I mean, the benefits you get from adopting it will uh, be a lot more. Yeah. Awesome. Right. Any other questions? Oh, all the way back. All right. I'll walk one more time. Oh, you're coming to meet me? Oh, man. It's awesome. Yeah, thanks. Uh, one of the slides shown, like, uh, passing extra arguments with the context is not a good idea. Why is that? Sorry, I couldn't. Uh, uh, like, one of the slides shown that uh, uh, passing extra arguments uh, uh, after the context is not a good idea. Like extra arguments, first first argument is the context and then you have shown like passing extra argument is not a good idea in any function. So why is that? Uh, no, I guess the, the is this, yeah, is that one. Uh, sorry, I didn't. Yeah, the, the next one is. Huh? This one? No, no, no. The one with the cross mark. Ah, uh, is that about the HTTP one or? Ah, ah, okay. So this is about uh, storing the context inside of a struct. So according to the Go documentation, this is not uh, recommended. And uh, but so, um, uh, but it's just in 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 interesting that the request does have it uh, as a workaround to enable it. But in general, yeah, I think that the idiom is to. Uh, Pass it as an argument over storing it in a struct. Uh -huh. All right, thank you so much.